Lord a hand clap of praise in this house on this morning. If you can't thank God for that, now just thank God for being alive on this morning. Thank God for being able to open up your mouth and thank God for what he's done for you. Thank God for having the activity of your limb. Some of y'all ain't praise God all morning. You might as well go ahead and get it out the way right now. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Let everything that have breath. Amen, amen, amen. Find you somebody on this morning to either your left or your right and say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break our love in two. Is the Lord not good to us on this morning? I don't know about you all, but I have just enjoyed myself up here this morning. Sister Coffee, if I wasn't scared, I couldn't come back. I would have took off running two or three times. I'm just, I'm just excited about what God is doing. God is good to us on this morning. And anybody that recognizes that God is actively working and moving in your life, you can't help but to give God praise. You can't help. Some folk, I don't understand, some people can look around like they've been sucking on lemons and persimmons since they woke up this morning, act like they mad at the world, just upset and frowning, got your head held down. But when you recognize that you are God's child and God is on your side and God is walking with you and God is talking with you, I may, I may face a momentary setback, but I know that this setback back. It's just another opportunity for God to show up and to show out in my life. Therefore, I'm not going to fret and I'm not going to worry because I know that God got my back. I know that God is on my side. How many of y'all know God is on your side this morning? No matter what the devil does, no matter what the devil says, no matter what they try to do, as long as God is on my side, man, I'm a force to be reckoned with. You better ask somebody. God is on my side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I am just so thankful. I want to do this. If you are visiting with us this morning, would you please honor me at this time by standing? If you are visiting with us this morning, would you please honor us by standing? Amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you all. We're just so thankful that you took out your um, time from your schedule to come and be with us here on this morning, we'll simply, as they said, a Bible-believing church. We believe in what thus saith the Lord. And on our way to heaven, we're just trying to help somebody else get just a little bit closer to Jesus. Is that all right? Amen. We are just so thankful to have you on this morning. Also, to all of you all that are watching this via live stream right now, we just want to let you know that you are just as much as part of this service this morning as we are. And we pray that you will be blessed by the things that go on during this service. And if you are ever in our area, we pray that you will come out and visit us here at the Sweetwater. The Church of Christ, where the gospel is preached. You heard it from them. You ain't hear it from me, so come check it out for yourself. Amen. As Brother Coffee said, I, 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 I'm, I'm just sad up here this morning. I'm upset. I'm not happy about it. I'm happy about the opportunity, but I'm upset um, about these weeks that I, I'm, I look at it as weeks. When you say a month, and make it seem like a long time. So I said, I said weeks that I'm. So I ask that you all keep me in prayer as I be. Um, over in Israel and Jerusalem for the next few months, and I'm um, looking forward to being back home coming in. Amen. Being here um, with you all for good that time. I ain't going nowhere. I, I, I ain't going up the street. I ain't going nowhere. I'll be, I'll be back here for good. That's all right, brother. Dixon. That's all right. I'll be back. I'll be back here for good on that time. So the only question I have right now, did anybody come to hear a word from the Lord? Oh, I believe you came to the right place this morning. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, beginning at verse number 1 and concluding at verse number 11. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. I plan on being up here 30 minutes, but that's up to God and what he want to do. Amen. Amen. What he want to do on this morning. Amen. So if I go over, get mad at God. Don't get mad at me. You know what? Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, beginning at verse number 1. Now, now, I want you to do me a favor. Look look, look to somebody close to you, to your left or your right, and I want you to ask them an important question. Now, first of all, tell them, don't lie to me. Now, go back and ask them, are you in? But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, I'm going to read down to verse number 11. His wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. 
But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land while it remained? Was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart that thou would lie not unto men but unto God? And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Good God Almighty. And it was the space of three hours when his wife, not knowing what had happened, came and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, that's right. I sold it for that. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have carried and buried thy husband are at the door, and they shall carry thee out also. Then she fell down and straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost and found dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Now go back to him and say, are you really in? Now, by show of hands, how many of y'all have ever heard a preacher preach, have never heard a preacher preach on Ananias and Sapphira? You've never heard a preacher preach on Ananias and Sapphira. Okay, how many of you have seldomly heard a preacher preach on Ananias and Sapphira? Many of you have heard it before. You've heard a preacher. Yes, yeah, some of y'all been in Sunday school, all right, for the five of y'all that came. We, we've heard the preacher preach about Ananias and Sapphira. Now, let me tell you that it's, it's tough to really explain this story. The text is in trouble. The text is in trouble because you just heard the story. But Ananias and Sapphira, they have lied to Peter. But the Bible says that they have lied not just to Peter, but when they lied to Peter, that they lied to God. Now, this is what the deal was. Everybody was supposed to sell all of their stuff. And then they were supposed to put it all together in a fund, and they would have all things in common. And we would give a certain economic part to this person who needed this, and this person needed that. You would distribute it as the people needed it. But Ananias and Sapphira had this little scheme going on. You know, they said, they said we're we going to say we sold it all, and this is what we got. But we're going to hide part of the money. Okay, this is between me and you. Don't tell nobody. We're going to put a little bit of the money to the side, and we're going to say that's all that we had. Now, don't talk about them because you would have did the same thing. All right, we're going to sell this part right here, and we're going to keep most of it for ourselves, and then we're going to give a portion back up to God. And in case this craziness don't work, we got some cash to the side. We got some saved for ourselves. It's wrong, but it kind of makes sense. You know, it's like they got a plan going on, and then the reason the text is hard to explain because they lied and God killed them. It would kind of scare y'all if I would have read, we should have read this before offering. Offering would have been off the chain this morning. <laughs> it would kind of scare you. It would scare you to know now. I don't mind God rebuking me. Rebuke me all day. I don't mind God convicting me, chastising me. You can even spite me, whatever you got to do. But killing the brother? Ain't no coming back from that. I mean, when you're dead, you just dead. I mean, you can't repent or nothing. you just dead right there. And then three hours later, to be exact, here come his wife telling the same lie. I mean, I mean, she was a ride or die, though. I mean, I mean, she was right there the whole time. Her story didn't change. She stuck with the same script. Basically, you got to you ask your neighbor, are you ride or die? <laughs> the, reason, the, reason, the reason this text is tough is because they lied about what the apostles were trying to build. But what the apostles were trying to build was not the same thing that God wanted. So why does God kill them for not being committed to something that he didn't even want? Because, because you see, if that was what God wanted, if God meant it for it to be that way, you see, the plan would be tried over and over again and fail if God is never in the plan. Now, what we are looking at is the apostles struggling to find out who are they in the kingdom of God. They are struggling because when God gives you an opportunity, the opportunity is often tainted by your history. 
So therefore, every time you find a good deal, you feel like it's a good move. It seems like your past always sneaks up to remind you about what you did and where you were and where you come from and how you're not built for it and how you're not built for it and how you'll never last and how that is not going to work. I'm so glad God blessing me is not predicated upon the mistakes of my past, but God will bless me simply because I'm his child. Work with me, if you will. Their, their history, their history is tied up in what we'll call the tangible expressions of God. That you got the Feast of Wheats, and then you got the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, and you got all of this. You got all these things that they could touch in the promised land was physical, and they possessed that land. And so they really wanted Jesus to set up an earthly kingdom. He would set up a kingdom on earth. That's what they thought, so they could be in leadership. Now, since Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do, maybe we should finish up what Jesus started. But So we're going to rise up in spite of being oppressed by Rome. We're still going to rise up and set up this kingdom, not, war, not knowing that the kingdom is not meat and drink, but it is joy and peace in Christ. So hadn't John the Baptist said one time that the kingdom of heaven is at hand? And aren't you tired of being oppressed by the Romans? This is what they're saying. Isn't it time for us to rise up and take over? Maybe we should just finish what Jesus started. We should pull these things together. And so here they are. They're trying to. These, these disciples are hungry for something that that they can see, something that they can touch, something that they can lay their hands on. I, 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 I want something I can see. I want something I can build. But here's the other part. When Jesus was alive, there was a group of women that supported him. Okay, but Jesus is now dead, and people support who they believe in. There's no guarantee that the people who supported Jesus is going to support them. So there's a different thing going on. But today, instead of us having what we needed today is people that have the spirit of Levi. But instead of people having the spirit of Levi, a lot of people skip over Levi and they want to jump straight to Judah. The praising generation, the, the shouting generation, the generation who goes for inspiration without impartation. And, and they sit here and they come here, they, they, they're the loudest one singing, the loudest one saying amen, but they won't give towards nothing. They won't support nothing. They get, they get checked, but they don't want to pay nothing. Oh, it's going to get right up in here this morning. You came to the right place on this morning. If you don't get this, guess what? Don't even get in your car. Go ahead and call you an Uber. Go ahead and call you a Lyft. Get on the bus or whatever you need to do, don't drive. <laughs> I tell you before you lose again that, church, if you don't learn how to give like you get, you will never make it anywhere in life. If I had time, I'd show you through it all how life is really like an ecological system. It's not just biblical, but it's ecological, it's science, it's everything. Anything that takes more than it gives will eventually destroy the soil. I would show you how God commanded the farmer to let the ground rest. Because you have to put something back in in order for you to be able to take something out of it. See, somebody here, you've never been taught how to give. They teach you how to take but they never taught you how to give. Are you demanding more from God than you're giving to God? Are you demanding more from your spouse and your children more than you're giving to your spouse and your children? I'll be down your street in just a minute because any area that you expect more than you invest, you will eventually find yourself disappointed. You're committed to God, but you also got to be committed to your own house. We got to get through this. this. This should be the language that you approach your family with, that we will get through this. It's not a me, my, and I thing, but we are in this thing together. Anything that you give half of yourself to, you're going to get half back. But you got to be all in what you are doing. It's going to be a rough ride back home this Sunday. As I said, it's going to be a rough ride back home. It's going to be a rough ride back home. It's, it's wrong for you to think that you're going to give an offering and God is going to bless what you want, but you're not really all in. It's, it's, an, it's an insult to God to ask God to bless your marriage and you're not committed. Want God to bless you in school, but you won't pick up that narrow book to study. 
want God to bless you as a saint of God, but you won't walk like a saint of God. Who do you think God is? Somebody out there in Vegas pulling a slide? God is not hitting no jackpot, no slot machine. God is guaranteed. He is the definite I am that I am, the mighty God of sure blessings. He told Abraham, it's not a thought that I'm going to bless you, but I'm not just going to bless you, but I will make you a blessing. Can I go a little deeper with this this morning? Here's something, here's something I want you to see. Before, when God brought the children out of the land of Egypt, he also brought them out with some economics to go with them. He had them to borrow all of the gold and the silver of the Egyptians. And so when, when they went through the Red Sea, the reason Pharaoh was chasing them was not just that he wanted his slaves back. Pharaoh wanted his money back. He wanted, he wanted his gold back. He, he could get more slaves. But the problem was that the slaves had ran off with his money. And they had so much money, y'all. That when Moses got ready to build the tabernacle in the wilderness and to make the gold and the artifact, he had to stop them from giving because they had so much that they had got from the Egyptian gold. And the tabernacle was made from the gold of the Egyptians. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I said the tabernacle was made from the gold of the Egyptians. Here is when we first began to understand that the wealth of the wicked is laid up. I'm going to say, he said, he said, here it is. But we, we got to come to a place. We got to come to a place here, right here. The tabernacle was made out of the gold of the Egyptian. God had given them, as we said, an economic system to start the first kingdom. Now, all he had to do was set up laws. God gave him the Ten Commandments, the judgments, the ceremonial cleansings, the ceremonial washings. And they began to understand that we are not just a family, but they came out of Egypt as a nation. Okay, so now in the New Testament, this is happening all over again. We have been called out of darkness. We have been called out of sin. We have been called to the marvelous light that is in Jesus Christ. But the difference is our Moses has gone and left the reins in the hands of his disciples. And suddenly they realize that they have a kingdom to set up, but they ain't got no gold. So it seemed good to them that now is a good time to set up the system, what, I, what we'll call our Hagar moment. Whereby Hagar is a moment when it doesn't look like God did everything he was supposed to do. So you have to come up with a backup plan to cover up for God. Now, I know that ain't talking about nobody here this morning because I know you ain't never called on God and asked God to show up. And since he didn't show up, you went out and started making your own little plans and getting all your own little stuff together. I know you ain't never been at that place in your life. But let me tell you, sometimes when you call on God, he will not answer in the way that you want him to answer. But that is not, that is not an excuse for us to run out and start making our own plans, run out and start setting up our own agenda. Your strategy and your point in life should not be to get God to bless your plans and your idea, but Lord, whatever you want me to do, Lord, here I am, send me. So, so, so it seemed good to them that, that they should set up this thing because, because you've, been, you've gone so long without a baby that maybe it's meant for your nurse to have your baby. That's a Hagar moment. That's, that's a Hagar moment when men try to cover for God. So they, so they come up with this Hagar moment of an idea and, and say, we're going we're gonna to make this work and we're going to do this thing because we got to have some kind of economy. And they're still struggling to understand because they're trying to build something, but they don't even really know what they are doing. It was not Jesus' plan that they would take all you have, lose all of your individual wealth and uniqueness, and then turn it all over to the church. That was never the plan. His plan was, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be what? Added. 
So God is saying, if you seek the kingdom first, it's not that I'm going to bless you. I just want you to know I want to express that I am the priority in your life. And that is what God said. God said you will never appreciate me like you really need to appreciate me until you make me number one in your life. Some of us got God number 10, number 20, number 30, number 40. God needs to be number one. He needs to have the priority on your job and your family. Whatever it is, God ought to be number one. So, 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 so they're saying if, if God, God is saying we ought to seek the kingdom first. And it's not that I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, but you got to get your eyes off of what you want and put your eyes on the plan that God has for your life. If you, un- you say, if you underwrite what I'm doing, I underwrite what you're doing. If, if you got my back, I've got your back. That's how we look at it in life. If, if you try to bless me, I'll try to bless you. If you want to go first, you can go first. But the Bible said that they took part and they hid apart. They said we can do this with a part, but not all of us. We can be partially in, but not all the way in. And God killed them. Because you can't give God part and expect God to give you all. You can't expect God to give you part. And you expect God to give you all. Most people have never fully thrown themselves into anything. They've been sliding by all their life. Throwing part of yourself at this. Hitting at that, slapping at the devil, throwing half of your heart in, half of your commitment in, half of your focus in. You can't throw half and sit with people that's giving all. You understand what I'm saying to you this morning. Now, it occurs to me that Peter and them are trying to discover what later Paul would pick up and talk about the hidden mysteries of God. They they would eventually figure out that the kingdom is not meat or drink, but it's joy and peace in the spirit of God. And that the kingdom that Jesus is talking about is not the kingdom of this world, but that it is a progressive revelation that was hidden before time. Later, the apostle Paul would come and begin to say, behold, I show you a great mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. Therefore, the mysteries of godliness, he's talking about the five different things that are mysteries that the early church did not understand until the apostle Paul revealed them unto them. So they're saying, seeing through a glass darkly. And they're trying to figure out God, kind of like us, you know, we're trying to figure out God. When God shows you something, but he don't show you everything. Arise and go to a land that I'll show you. When God, when you get part of the information, but you don't get all of the information. Have you ever been there? Have you ever stepped out on a whim? You ever stepped out to take a chance and to take an opportunity? And you say, well, God, you led me here. Now where are you? It seemed like you brought me out to the door. You opened the door, but you left me after that. What am I to do? Lord, you've been leading me all this time. What am I to do? Where am I going to go? But you got to keep the attitude. You got to keep the mindset that if God brought me to it, God is good enough to bring me through it. And if God does not bring me out of it, he's good enough to stick with me in the midst of it and make sure I come out all right. Ask your neighbor, are you in this morning? You ever seen people that get upset with other people just because they're gifted in a certain area? When they so soon forget that we all got the same 24 hours in the day. We all got the same seven days in a week. We all got the same 365 days of the year. We all got the same chance. And the only reason you can't do it like they did it is because you didn't go all in. It ain't that the person is better than you. May not even be that they're more gifted than you. But it's definitely true that they're more committed than you are. Because while I was out there playing the fool, they were sitting at the desk getting their knowledge. They were sitting at the desk getting the information that they needed. So therefore, I can't look at you crazy because you took advantage of the time that God gave to you while I was out here wasting time. When the Bible Bible says, when the Bible says, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure. Not just good measure, but what? And then after I press it down, I'm 
shake it together, running over, whatever you give to yourself, it's going to give back to you. You give yourself to medicine. Medicine will give itself back to you. If you don't give yourself to medicine, the medicine cannot do anything for you. Now, I, I could be a bootleg doctor. I could really do that. I know some home remedies that my folk done told me that if you got anything going on, I'm sure I can tell you to go out there in the woods and pick up this leaf and pick up that leaf, boil it down, put your little vinegar in it, take it, you'll be all right in the morning. I'm sure. I'm sure I can tell you that. I can tell you that, man, I got some stuff to tell you. You'll never have to take another blood pressure pill in your life. I tell you, you drank a little bit of it every week. Guess what? You'll be hey, okay. But guess what? I'm letting, guess what? Sure. I'm sure somebody would appreciate that information, but they wouldn't appreciate that coming from me like they would a medical physician. And, and sure, I sure don't get paid like a medical physician. Praise God. They just tell me thank you and go on by the way. That other person get paid on a whole nother level. They get paid a whole lot more for their medical advice than I do. And it's not necessarily made. They are smarter in that area than I am. But they actually took out time to invest more into it than I did. So I can't be mad because they got the brains and I don't. Because they took what it did to get the information. I can't reap your harvest with my investment. And be talking about God ain't fair. Yes, he is fair. That's what the problem is. You cannot get to congregate with the committed while you're just giving part of yourself. You give part of yourself to your marriage, your marriage is going to give part of itself to you. You give part of yourself to your kids, your kids will give part of themselves to you. You give part of yourself to your ministry, guess what? The ministry will give part of itself to you. The truth of the matter is, have you ever been all? Have you ever had yourself in talent, sweat, energy, and all? Or have you always just been giving part of yourself? Your, your harvest looked just like your seed. Your harvest looked exactly like your seed. The Bible says if you sow sparingly, you shall. They don't just have to deal with money. They got to deal with every aspect of your life. If you sow bountifully, you shall reap also bountifully. When your insides are given to God, when your heart is given to God, with my whole heart, Lord, I will follow thee. Not just with my hands and my feet, but with my innermost being, Lord. I want to do your will. I will not face a giant without you, Lord. I will not make a decision without praying unto you, Lord. I will not bring somebody into my life just because they dress nice and kind of got a couple dollars in their pocket. But I'm going to make the decision after I have prayed and I have talked to God. When whatever you do, you better be committed. Tell somebody you better be committed. You better be committed. Your first commitment is to God. Second is to your family. And it's a very important commitment. It's a very important commitment because you better be committed or you ain't going to be able to make it. If you can only love me when you like me, we ain't going to make it. Because sooner or later, on purpose, I'm bound to pluck your last nerve and then ask you, are we still good? We all right? All right, go ahead and get yourself together. Guess what? Be out. We'll be all right in a minute. If you're not committed, you're not going to make it. Even with the personalities that you don't necessarily like and get along with. You have to be committed through the storm and the rain. Through the heartache and the pain and the disappointment, you have to believe in the we and the us and not the me and the you. And you're, and, 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 and you're going to make it if you stay committed. It's a commitment. It's not just a feeling. You got to come home when you love me. And guess what? When you don't like me, you still got to come home and you got to love me or we are not going to make it. And stay there until the love come back. That's commitment. Y'all don't want to hear the truth. You, you, we want to hear fairy tales, and we want to hear Hollywood shake and bake stuff. And, but it's a reality. You got to be committed. You're my son in my house. You were my son when you took my money. You were my son when you found yourself out there in the hog pen. You were my son when you was out there in the whorehouse. 
You are my son. When you was out there doing things that you wanted to do, it is a commitment. And if you're not going to be committed, you don't need kids, you don't need family, you don't need anything. Because it's not that you're doing a favor. That's your job. To clean up their vomit. And everything else that comes out of you when you was a child. So then, when I turn around and get old, don't throw me away and not come visit me and take care of me. It's reciprocity. Whatever you give, you got to give it back. No, it, 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 it ain't about teaching this stuff. Somebody has to got to arrest this crazy generation of people that want to take everything, but you don't want to give anything back. Don't nobody owe you nothing. Anything that you get in this life, you're going to get it by your blood, your sweat, and your tears. Commitment to God, number one. Number two, commitment to your family. Number three, you ought to be committed to your church. I have never seen anything like this, what we have going on. We don't want to commit ourselves to anything. You're lucky if you see us after we get baptized. And if you do see us, it'll be on CME, Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. How you doing? And don't talk to me too long because I got to get away. I got to get out of here. And forget Sunday night. I didn't even know y'all had service on Sunday night still. Wednesday night, y'all still coming out here on Wednesday night? Still coming? I ain't even know y'all. I ain't been there so long. Now, this is why people in the church rest so much for position and titles and power. Because titles and positions are the spirit of Ananias and Sapphira. I want the title, but I don't want to do no work. Give me a ministry, but don't give me no misery. Give me your strategy, but I don't want to be put through no kind of struggle. And analysis is the fact, everything you could have been will die if you're not all in. Everything you could have been. Wonder who they could have been. They are only in the scriptures to us as a warning. They don't give us no kind of revelation. They, they don't give us no kind of consecration. They make no contribution to our theological understanding of God, except they warn us of what happens when you're not all in. That is the truth. That is the reality, and that is the problem. They hid what they should have given. They save some for themselves. Some people have never giving all of themselves to anything, not to your own relationship. You hold something back in case you get hurt. Well, I'm talking to you. you I'm going to love you, but I'm going to only love you a little bit because I'm going to save something for me in case you run out and leave me like the other one did. In fact, I ain't even going to go all of that. I'm going to just keep it all for myself. And anybody else that comes after you, oh, so 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 messed it up for you. They messed it up for you. They did this and they did that. A lot of you will miss out on the best opportunities of your life, worrying about what happened, how this was, how they did me, what they said. You got to learn how to let go. Because they considered self, they future that. Because they did not seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. They lost out on everything else that they could have had. Oh, you really in this morning? Oh, you really, are you really in this morning? Are you just halfway in? Are you in until somebody don't shake your hand? Are you in until you don't get recognition? Because I know they saw me pick up them two pieces of paper that was sitting on that row. They've been sitting there since Wednesday. Nobody else tried to pick it up. And I picked it up. And you know they got up there. He checked it in the announcements. He didn't even ask me. He didn't even tell the people to thank me for picking up the paper. That's our biggest problem. You do stuff wanting recognition. 
you do stuff, wanted somebody to come and pat you on your back and tell you good job for what you've done. But let me tell you, if you live off of the approval of people, then when somebody disapproves of you, what are you going to do? You got to learn how to be your own cheerleader. You got to learn how to be your own hype man. You got to learn how to be that person. Then when I feel like I can't go on any further, you got to reach way, way down on the inside and find something that says, hey, God ain't brought me this far to leave me now. I believe I run on. See what the end going to be. So therefore, I'm not halfway in. You ought to be shaming of yourself. You just get halfway in the tub when you take a bath. You want to get clean? You got to get But our problem is, is that we today have a sense of, I'm owed something. So therefore, I don't have to give all of myself because my being here should be enough for you. Don't ask me to do nothing extra. Don't ask me to come out here on a Thursday night. I wouldn't come on Tuesday, you know, having to have nights back on now. I'd be at the house. You know, but, 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 you know, we. That Veronica, man, I can't wait till she get hugged, man. I'm, a, I'm just waiting on somebody to get Veronica, man. You know, yeah. But uh, that's, that's, that, that, that's, that, that's, the problem. that's the problem with us. That's the problem with us. We, we strive to be at a place in our life. Every single individual in here, no matter what level or station you find yourself at this morning, you don't desire or hope to remain where you are, but you want to always be elevated. You want to always be going higher. Lord, if you did this in my life, oh, Lord, I, I know you're just bad enough to do something just a little bit extra in my life. But here it is. We crave all of that, and we want all of that, but you don't want to do no work. We don't want to be committed. We, we, we don't want to be committed. We don't want to put ourselves in anything because once you deprive me of the things that I want, I can't be a part of that. So what we have to get is the mindset that if you ain't in and if you ain't in, that's not going to affect me because I got to be all in. So many of us, before we make a decision, before we want to make a choice, we got to run and ask what our friends are doing there. Man, what you think about this and what you think about that and which way you going to go and which way you're going to go. Man, I mean, you got to realize, man, when you stand before God, you ain't going to be able to call on nobody to back you up, to bail you out, to help you out. When you stand before God, it's going to be you. So that's the same way right now. Your walk with God is a personal relationship with God. And let me tell you, that's why folk can't understand every and anything that you go through in this life. And that's because it's a personal thing that you got going on with God. So guess what? You might look at me crazy when you see me clapping my hand. You might look at me crazy. I got my hand, man, I can't even see. She keeps lifting her hands up. I can't see. She's in my way. But guess what? If that bothers you, go ahead and put that little thing. You might as well go ahead and walk out the door because guess what? I want woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm thinking about all the things that God has done in my life. He deserves the glory. He deserves the praise. I'm not halfway in. I'm all in. You know you have to make a decision not to be all in. They made the decision. Together, we're going to lie about what we gave. And some of us say, ooh, they ought to be shamed. Just imagine that principle still stood true today. How many of us will be here this morning? Be, be, be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Because y'all already know there have been many a times in our lives. I didn't say your lives. I said our lives. Because guess what? It fit from the pulpit to the back door. All of us, at some point in our lives, have not given God everything. And that's our biggest problem. When people want to come to Jesus, you want to come to Jesus on your terms. 
God, I want to come. You know that hymn thing I heard the preacher talking about? It sounded real good. You know, I, I want to go there one day. But I can't give up what I'm doing for that. That sounds too boring to me. I, you know what I mean? I'm out here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. You know, I'm, I'm still, I, got, I still got some living to do. I still got some things that I want to get done in my life, you know, with them. And I still, you know, I, I'm going to come to the church when I get right. That don't make good, bad sense. This is where you come to get yourself right. So if you're waiting on yourself to get right before you come to Jesus, guess what? It's going to be too late. I wonder, I wonder how many of us, if we knew exactly how much longer we had on this life, in this life, how differently we would live. How, how differently our commitment would be to God. How, how more serious we could be. Man, I tell you, when I tell you, we had chairs all like that in the foyer. But folk be sitting outside in the parking lot, have to put a loudspeaker on the outside. If people were really serious about their commitment to God. But man, it's 2020 and folks still tripping. Folks still are not taking their commitment to God seriously. Yet every day of your life, this Duval man, you turn on the news station. You're no better than they are. You were just not in the right place at the wrong time. God kept you from that. Even when you were not asking God to do it, guess what? He still, ooh, that, that's just like a mama's love right there. I, 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 ain't nobody's love like God's love and a mother's love. You know, a, a mama going to love you if don't nobody else love you. Y'all know that, right? I don't care. You do, You could be in the window jail 20 times. Guess what? Mama's still coming to how much to bail, what I got to do to get my baby out of here. Now, you talk to dad, it's a different story. Dad said, man, I ain't going back down there. I'm tired of giving my money down there. Let him stay down there in that jail. And mama will sit there while he in the room and agree with it. And as soon as he walk out the room, she grabbing her purse, going down there to the bail bus. <laughs> Let my baby out of here. I know he ain't no good. I know he's full of trouble, but that's still my child. And if God got that kind of love, you and a mother got that kind of love for her child, what kind of love you think God got for his children? No greater love than this, that a man would lay down his life. So can I paint a picture to you? Let me borrow for a moment the canvas of your mind. <laughs> and paint a picture for you of what it looks like to be all in. Robert, if you ever played poker, I'm sure you lose it there just like you're using spades, wherever you are. Uh, <laughs> ain't that right, Ronnie? Woohoo, yeah. You know, for anybody that's ever played poker, when a person says that they're all in, that means that all their chips are on the table. I ain't got nothing up my sleeve, Robert. I don't have, I don't have anything in my jacket pocket. I don't have anything. I have simply, I have put everything I have out there, and I'm all in. So this is what all in looks like. A perfect God would see an imperfect people. He looked throughout the earth. And there was nobody that could satisfy the sin debt. So God says, I, I know you're not any good. I know you're on the wrong side of the track. And you really don't deserve my mercy and my grace. But because you're my creation, I'm going to give you another chance. So God says, therefore, since I cannot find individual in the earth to go for it, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to step down myself. I'm going to come down through a nine-month-long train named the Virgin Mary. I'm going to be born in a manger to sorrow and shame. I'm going to go through all of that just so I can have the opportunity to come among you and give you the opportunity that if you remain faithful unto me, one day you'll receive a crown of life that will never fade away. So he comes. So he comes. A perfect God comes among 
and imperfect people gives his life in your place. So you don't have to die and pay for what you've done. I'm going to pay it. And Brother Carf, aren't you glad that God ain't like us? Cause can you see us now? What's the past due amount? What's my late charges? What's my, what I got to pay just so y'all don't cut me off? But God says, because you're my child, I can't just put a payment on it. I got to pay it all off. I got to pay it all off. I got to pay your debt. So because of the shedding of his innocent blood, we have the remission of our sins. Therefore, what can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It is in his blood that you will find the washing away of your sins. It is in his blood that you will find the strength to be able to go on and fight just another way. And, 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 and child of God, here today, maybe there's somebody here, you've been looking for Jesus. You found him. You've been looking for him. You've been looking for him. What, what can I find? He's in his word because I want you to understand God who has sundry time and in divers matters spake unto us by the prophets, having these last days spoken to, unto us by his son, Jesus Christ. And since our master is no longer here on earth, we have his word that we are to govern and we are to guide ourselves by. So children of God, if you are here today, I want to let you know that God hath and his word given you the prescription for your salvation. He's given it to you. He's given it. He's offered it unto you. And Jesus says simply, whosoever will. I don't care what walk of life you come from. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what people have said about you. I don't care how people have counted you out. He said, whosoever will. Now, while you're locking up, people might be thinking in their mind, ain't that the same person? Ain't that the one that did this? Ain't that the same one? But still, Jesus said, whosoever will, let them come. Oh, she don't deserve that. He don't deserve this. He ought not have that. He ought not. But still, he said, whosoever let him come. Come from the loathsome way of sin and let him hide you in the blood of Jesus. Come for the Lord will take you in and let him hide you in the blood of Jesus. Friends, family, beloved, time is winding up. Your time, my time, time is winding up. I don't care who you are and I don't care how young you are. It makes no difference where you're going and how you're getting there. Young people in this room, for those of you that are teenagers, guess what? You're in the dawn of your life. Those of you 20, 25, and 30, guess what? You're in the morning of your life. Those of you 35, 40, and 45, guess what? You're in the noonday of your life. Those of you 50, 55, and 60, guess what? You're in the afternoon of your life. But for those of you that have got up around 65, 70, 75, and 80, it's getting late in the evening. Oh, sun going down. But aren't you glad that the leaning tree ain't always the first one to fall? You can be in the best of health, young, feeling good, exercising, doing everything that you need to do. But when the Lord calls your name, I don't know where you're going, but you got to get up out of here. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. Make it your purpose. Make it your business to be all in with God. Make the decision today, beloved, if you have not, as of yet, give yourself fully and totally to God. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I, I freely give. He ain't sticking me up, making me do it, but Lord, I freely give myself over to you. So, friend, if you're here today, get in with God. And let me tell you, if you're in it with him, He's going to be in it with you.
You can believe that. Guess what? That's one check. And you ain't got to worry about it bouncing. You can take it down there right now and you can cash it because guess what? If God said he'd be by your side, God is going to be by your side. He said, I just won't be with you some of the way. He said, I will be with you all the way, even unto the ends of the earth. So my friend today, if you need to make a decision, you know what decision you need to make. No individual in here knows your ins and outs. We know sister and brother you. We don't know you. Only God knows your end parts. God, God knows your thoughts. God knows your motives. God knows why it is that you do what you do. And since God knows everything about you, this man is so powerful, the very hairs on your head are numbered. He didn't say counted. He said they were numbered. It would be enough for God to say that they were counted, but he took out time to say that they were numbered. So, Brother Coffee, why are you combing your hair? If one of your hairs get caught in the comb, God knows that number 16,428 that ain't got caught up. God knows the very hairs on your head. He knows all about you. So why not give him the opportunity to take that wrong in your life, wash it down in his blood so you can come out as white as pure snow. Give God the opportunity. Give God the chance. This will be the very best decision that you have ever made in your life. The decision to say yes to Jesus. And Satan, get behind me. So my friend, if you are here today, come to Jesus by hearing this word. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17 says, so then faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. After hearing this word, you must believe the same. Upon belief, it causes you to repent of your sins. What is repentance? Repentance is a change of your mind that produces a change in your action. You, have, you make it your purpose that when you come up, you want to do better. You want to live better. You want to act better. That is your purpose because you have repented on the inside of yourself. Lord, I'm doing away with all of that because I want to follow you, not for faith, but I want to follow you for real. So you hear this word, believe the same. Repent of your sins. Confess with your mouth. The sweetest name known to mortal tongue, and that is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. At the confession, you are willing to be baptized for the remission of your sin. Have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you in this life, and neither the life that is to come. And according to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, the Lord himself will add you to his body, to his church, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. If you are here today, you're subject to the invitation, or you're just standing in the need of prayer, whatever it is, don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. Take your time, make your decision right now, but together we stand and sing the song of invitation. I surrender all to you. Everything.